Well, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm just getting my computer set up here because I've got some really cool things to show you tonight. I am using, like I said, some new technology. So I'm going to actually be able to show you the screen of my computer because I want to show you some examples and things that we're going to be talking about. And um, again, I'm Rachel Parlett, and you can find me on the Classroom Nook blog at classroomnook.com. And um, tonight we're going to talk all about theme. So let me just go ahead and transition over so you can see my screen. And hopefully that's showing up for you now. Um, like I said, we're going to talk about theme tonight because it's one of the most difficult things, at least I think so, one of the most difficult things um, about teaching is getting those teach or teaching those concepts that are kind of abstract for students and um, theme for me at least was one of them so we're going to talk about it tonight i have a new strategy that i myself have learned and i'm excited to share it with you um so let's get right into it but actually before we start if you have some teacher friends that you think could benefit from this topic or you want them to be able to talk about it with you, please share this video and you can do so by clicking that share button that's right below um, the video that you're watching, whether it's on mobile or whether it's on your desktop. So you can click that share button and share this video with your friends and invite more people to the party. So welcome again. If you have questions or comments or things that you wanna know more about, pop them into the comments. I'm gonna use my phone here to um, see your comments because I can't see it on my computer screen with the way that technology is in. So pop them in there and if I don't get to them right away while we're here live, I will definitely get them before we leave. So that's taken care of. So I'm just gonna say it. teaching theme is hard, right? It's just, it's complicated for students and um, a lot of times they don't get it. So we struggle with it, teaching it, and so often we resort to kind of spoon feeding it to our students and um, we, we ask them leading question after leading question after leading question in hopes that they'll finally get it when really they're not getting it. They're just good at following our leading questions. So it's it's difficult for teachers to teach it. And sometimes we try to ask questions like, what was the problem of the story? What did the characters learn? How did they overcome their problems in hopes that that's going to get them to the theme? But actually, um, it's kind of often a big jump to go from those questions to finding the theme. And so students kind of get lost along the way and they struggle with it because it is an abstract concept, right? All right. So one of the challenges that students have when they're trying to come up with theme is that they often miss um, interpret the main idea for the theme. And so they think they've come up with theme, but it's actually the main idea, right? So one of the first things that I do when I introduce theme to my students is I teach them the difference, explicitly teach them the difference between theme and main idea so that they can kind of have them side by side and really see what the differences are. So this is just my definition for theme. You might have something similar or something different, but I always teach my students that theme is the central message that the author wants the reader to understand. And then I added this part at the end because it's going to be used later on when we actually just determine a theme. I say that themes often come from the author's own beliefs or feelings. And then I again say theme is not the same as the main idea. So here, here's the list that I use when I describe theme versus main idea. Theme is a lesson the author wants to, us to learn. It's a moral that the author is trying to show us or teach us. It um, can op often represent the author's own beliefs, just like you see in the definition there, and it can be applied to our own lives. And that's really key there because, as you'll see in the main idea category, it's specific to the story, whereas theme can kind of over is an overarching arching, um, idea that can apply to many aspects of our life, whereas main idea is specific to the story. So main idea is a summary of what the story is mostly about. It only applies to that story, and it often refers to specific characters or events, right? So those two, those, having those two things side by side really helps students to start to see the difference between theme and main idea. So I, to, when I first start teaching it, I just real simply use a story that I know that they're going to be familiar with, such as the tortoise and the hare, right? Most kids have read that. And so, and it's a simple story. It's a simple concept. So it's not really deep for them to have to figure out the theme. And I just take this story and I teach, I show them the difference between what the theme of this story is and what the main idea is. So the theme of the story is the winner is the one who keeps going and never gives up, right? 
We learn that from a very early age. And the main idea is the summary, a rabbit challenges a hare to a race and is surprised when the hare wins the race. So students can see that in the main idea, we're talking about the specific characters and what happened. And in the theme, it doesn't mention the characters or the actual events, but it talks about what was learned, the lesson, the theme, the moral of the story, right? So that's the very first thing that I do when I teach students is I kind of break down those walls of the difference between theme and main idea. Another challenge that students have is when they come up with theme, they really are only coming up with topics. And quite honestly, this is how I actually used to teach theme. I thought loyalty was a theme, friendship was a theme, love was a theme. And they are, but we have to expand upon them to really get more into what about loyalty, friendship, and love. And so often we teach the students and and I see it all over the place. And I, like I said, I've done it myself where we see common themes in literature and you see some of these things listed, but really we want to go beyond that, go deeper. What about loyalty is the, is the author trying to teach us? What about friendship? What about love? Right? So again, students need to expand on these topics and turn them into themes. And so the first thing that I do to help them do that is I, have them complete a story mountain. And I actually have them complete the story mountain as we're reading the story. So it's really easy for them to remember what they just read. They put it down. And if you watched my Facebook Live a few weeks ago, I was talking about some of my most favorite activities to do with fiction or with any novel rather. And a story mountain is something that I always do when I'm teaching a novel because it helps to kind of keep the students reminded of the main events that are happening and helps them to kind of summarize. So we talk about the background knowledge, the rising action, the critical events, um, also known as the climax, uh, find, falling action solution and conclusion. And what we do then is we look back at that story mountain and I have the students come up with words or phrases that help represent the story. So as they look back over those major events, what are some of the main topics or the key words that they see kind of repeating themselves over and over? And we make a list of all those words and topics, okay? And sometimes they come up with things that maybe was on, would only kind of apply to one area of the story, but I go ahead at this point and I just write what down what they say so that, you know, you're acknowledging their participation and all that good stuff. But um, later on, we'll kind of narrow it down to topics and keywords that are applicable to the entire story. So I just actually finished a novel unit on the one and only Ivan. And I don't know if you've read it, but it is a fabulous book. And it, I have my novel, or the novel unit that I created is going to be coming out October 27th. So if you want to read this uh, book with your students, stay tuned for that. But um, this is what really kind of got me thinking about how can I teach themes so that it makes more sense to the students. And I when I was doing research, I just found this really awesome way, and that's why I'm sharing it with you tonight. So in just a, a quick, quick nutshell, one the one and only Ivan, it's based on a real live gorilla, a real life gorilla rather, that lived, um, it was, he was brought over from Africa, and he actually lived in um, his owner's home, he was purchased, and he lived in his owner's home, and he was treated kind of like a toddler would be treated, and as he got too big, the owner then moved him to basically a shopping mall where it was like a, um, a shopping mall with, um, you know, your regular shopping stuff, but then it had this really weird section of the mall where they had these live animals, and the gorilla was one of them. Well, it's a fiction story, so kind of from there, it kind of becomes fictionalized in the story, but Ivan, the um, gorilla in the story, He's really lonely and there's other animals that are really lonely. And so all these different topics come up about, for example, animal rights. So they talk, you know, as you're reading the story, you start thinking, boy, this is really inhumane for these animals to be living basically in these like concrete boxes. Um, there's a really overlying or um, underlying theme of, of friendship that comes throughout. And again, these are just topics determination because as the story continues, Ivan is really determined to communicate to his owners that he wants to get out and he wants to um, save and, and protect the other people, the other animals that are in the story. And so there's that uh, topic of freedom that comes up and he makes a promise to um, one of the elephants who ends up sadly dying in the story that he will get out of this um, mall and into a zoo 
And um, and so there's this this thinking about, you know, what could home, what is home really about? You know, living in this concrete wall is not um, home to us. So these are topics that the students can come up with as they're reading. And um, these themselves are not the themes yet. And so um, we need to teach our students to kind of expand upon that. So one way that you can do this, and this is not my idea, so I'm not taking credit for it, but I'm sharing it with you because I just think it is like kind of the missing piece of the puzzle for me uh, with teaching theme um, all these years. And I, I feel like this is just kind of broken it wide open. So you give them this theme sentence. Because if you remember back um, when you talk about the definition of the theme, the last part that I put in there was that theme um, often represents what the own author feels and believes so that they therefore want the reader to believe it and feel it as well. So you give them the, um, this theme sentence, the author believes that. Okay, and that's going to get the students kind of um, started. And they take their phrase, their, their um, let's go back just real quick, they take their topic, any of them, and again, this is where you're going to kind of um, pull out the weeds if students had put down words that maybe don't make sense. After you make your big list, cross off the ones that, that don't really make sense or don't really um, go through the whole story, and you come up with your refined list. You take one of those words and you have this sentence, this sentence started, the author believes that, and you um, take that word and you turn it into the finishing part of this sentence. Uh, the author believes that a home, there's that key word, should be a place where you feel safe and happy. So you put that all together, but really what the theme is, is that um, the section that you see there that I have circled. That's the theme. The author that believes that kind of gets the students started. Thanks, Michelle. Um, but the actual theme is a home should be a place where you feel safe and happy, right? So one quick tip is that you don't want to let students use the characters' names in this sentence, right? Because we talk about how the theme does not involve characters or the specific events. That's more the main idea. So instead, you want to make sure that they don't use specific details from the story, that it's a more generalized phrase or sentence. So this is the sheet that I'm uh, that I'm currently using for teaching theme um, in my units. So this is actually straight out of my new novel unit, the one and only Ivan. So at the top, there's where they're going to list their keywords. This is probably something you're going to be doing as a group together. And um, list all those words and phrases. They can cross out ones that you might decide as a class really aren't topics and themes for the whole story. And then they turn those into the author believes that and they turn them into that those sentences. So they take those words like home, freedom, determination, and they turn them into a theme sentence. So that's kind of like, that, that would be an activity that you would do as a whole class together, especially getting started. And then maybe if you repeat this activity later on in the year, they can do this themselves. So here's where, this is the fun part, okay? So you come up with all those theme sentences. Maybe you have three or four for the novel that you're reading. And then what you do is you're gonna divide students into that number of groups. So if you have four theme sentences, you're gonna divide them into four groups. And each group is gonna get a different colored marker. And what you'll do is you'll have that theme sentence minus the, the author believes part, or the author believes that part, and you write that section on the top of a piece of paper. And what the students will do is they will crumple that piece of paper up, like my little animation there. They'll crumple the piece of paper up and they'll throw it to another group, okay? That group takes their marker or their crayon or whatever they're using and they look for evidence in the story to support that theme. Because right, we always want our students to go back into the text and find so, uh, supporting evidence. So this is just a fun way to do that. And the students can work together in their small groups. They can um, go back in their books and look for evidence. They don't have to necessarily find an exact section of the story. They can kind of paraphrase it. If they can't find it exactly, they can go back through their old notes that they've used and activities that they've completed for the novel unit to find evidence that's going to support it. And they're going to write it down in their colored marker that they have. Then they're going to crumple the piece of paper back up throw it to the next group, and the next group is going to find another piece of evidence, and they're going to write it down on the same sheet. So by the end of the activity, you have, um, you all, this, all the, the groups have gotten each of the themes that are part of the story, 
and they're going to write their evidence down. They can write more than one if they have more than one. Um, but then when they're done, you have a list of all this different text evidence to support each of the themes. And if you don't want to do it in this way, you could you could put um, big chart paper on your walls with each of the themes written across the top and have students maybe write on post-it notes and put it up on the, on the chart paper for each theme. However you want to do it, this is just a, an interactive way to do that. And then an extension that you might want to include um, would be to have groups take you, the, I'm serious, let me back up. The original group that had that theme, hopefully it's made it all the way around the class and back to them, they can take their original theme and either work together as a class or work um, on their own to then take all that text evidence and create like a, a mini essay about the theme, one of the themes of the story. Makes it really a nice ending thing. So that, it's real quick tonight because I just wanted to share with you that quick tip. But what the things that I've showed you, the Story Mountain, um, the What is Theme, and um, Anchor Chart, and the two activity sheets that go along with it, I have for you to download if you want to use this new tip in your classroom. So all you have to do is go to bit.ly forward slash cn dash teaching theme. And you'll be able to download the um these resources that I've used if you want to try out this new strategy in your classroom. So um, thanks for joining me for a kind of a quick Facebook Live tonight. Remember, we're here every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with a new topic, a new thing to talk about. And um, that's all I have for you tonight. So have a wonderful rest of your evening and a great start to your weekend tomorrow. Take care. And I have to find out how to turn it off. My new technology. Let's see. End live video. Bye.